Welcome back everybody to Binding of Isaac Explained, Season 2, Episode 1. That's right, we're back, and I got at least 5 new episodes planned, so shoot your tears at that subscribe button and ring the bell. Today we will be talking about the terrible old safe system that I created in The Binding of Isaac. The original Binding of Isaac is a Flash game, and Flash doesn't have a very good way to save files. So what we used back in the day was Flash cookies to save things. They work in a similar way to browser cookies which allow you to store some information somewhere on your computer. It works pretty simple in Flash, you can just make a Flash cookie object and then you can use a function to write into it or read variables out of it. And that worked well of course, until you make the mistake of downloading one of those stupid computer cleaning programs. Delete your unnecessary files now that slow down your computer. Now don't delete those, those are the Binding of Isaac save files, what are you doing? So soon after the release we had reports of people losing their progress in mysterious ways. So I had to find a solution to fix the issue, and fast. I can't expect people to stop using PC cleaners, can I? There was once a Flash game called You Live Only Once, where you actually die one time and then the game refuses to let you respawn. And when you tried to open it in a new window, or you restarted your browser, it would still remember, and it would show you the increasingly sad scenes of Mario's funeral and such. That was such a fun game. Oh, and look, the game also had an FPS counter that you can't hide, just like Isaac did when it first came out. <laughs> They probably used a combination of flash cookies and files that save on your computer to save your progress, or in this case, your careless loss of your single life. So I had to figure out how to work with files. So did flash from the browser have the ability to write files on your computer? That would be a big security risk. Well, I don't remember for sure, but I think there was an option to write files, I just don't know if it worked in browsers. Hmm. Well anyways, it turns out that the program that I was using to package the flash files into an executable file for Steam had a convenient way to read and write files. But now I had to learn how to turn all my save games into one big text variable to save it into a file. And ideally make it so that you can't just easily see what the variables are. I didn't have convenient functions that would write the text for me, I had to manually write the code that does that. Ok, so what I do is turn all the variables into a string of numbers. For example, the achievements would add a 1 if they had been achieved, or a 0 if they had not been achieved, giving us a bunch of 1s and zeros. But since this would be too easy to manipulate, I chose to disguise it with an encryption. It works kind of similar to Caesar cipher, where you replace each letter in a sentence with another letter based on an encryption key. But instead the number is dependent on where it is in the text. I made a deterministic string of numbers, meaning that it's the same every time, so if you don't have the achievement, it just puts that number that would go here, but if you do have the achievement, it adds a different number instead, one that is one number higher for example. So now this gives us a series of numbers that I can read and write and I called this file serial.txt, and nobody ever cracked my ingenious cipher. I kid of course, people almost immediately figured out that this was the save file. Anyways, the solution worked well enough, and the game saved into both flash cookies and the serial.txt save file. So if your cookie jar gets raided, you still have the save file to fall back onto, and Steam could of course synchronize your save file if you had different computers. For the rest of the variables I wrote a function that takes a variable and adds a character to the end of the serial text. So when I wanted to read the file, I had to make sure that the variables are called in the same order, as I saved them, or else it would get jumbled and it would all be crazy. It's good to make your own system like this at least once so you understand how it works, maybe. But there is a more efficient way of doing this called a JSON string. So let's learn how I should have made it instead if it was a little more professional. For example, in C-sharp I would have created a save class, and the save class would have all the variables that I would want to save. Let's say a list of bools for the achievements, which would tell you true or false whether or not they have been achieved. Or a number for which checkpoint you add. Or a floor, if we're talking Isaac, how many coins you have, stuff like that. So this class would look something like this. So now we can use a command that transforms this class into a text, and that's called JSON, without the A. 
And then you can write that text into a file, a text file or whatever other type. So here's what that looks like. You got a bunch of parentheses and then it says in quotations, coins equals 20, level equals four, achievements and there's the list of the achievements. So that's the most convenient way to turn a bunch of variables into a single text. File extensions are just a word. You can call your file type whatever you want. Just don't make it a virus exe, I guess. So when you want to read your safe game, you just read the file and transform it into a new instance of that safe class by using a JSON command. If you want, you can encrypt your files before saving them and decrypt them after loading them using a Caesar cipher of your own or something more complex if you want. But in my experience, any game that's sufficiently popular, there is no encryption that will stop people from messing with your files. Best to just save them in the most efficient way anyways. And then you need to pick a spot for where you want the files to go. Each engine will have a different place where it puts the save files by default. In Isaac I just put it in the same folder where the Isaac exe was stored. But in Unity you might have some, some space for it in, in the app data that's hidden on your computer somewhere where it's safe. Anyways, let's look at the JSON text again. Naturally, converting your data into a text block is not the most efficient way of doing it when it comes to hard drive space. If you have it say true or false in a text that's four characters, that would add up to 32 bits. If you just say true or false, that's called a bool and it takes a single bit of memory. <laughs> that would be better. So if you specifically have a lot of booleans in your JSON file, that would be pretty inefficient. But it won't matter, it's just a text file and those rarely reach up to 1 KB, which is nothing compared to the file size of a, of a texture or an audio file. And that's why I would suggest using JSON as much as you can for your save files. It's just convenient. Anyways, the original Isaac had no way to save your game during a run. The only thing that gets saved are the achievements and the unlockable characters. I probably should have made a real save file, but I like that you can't just bring Isaac back from the dead by pressing Alt F4 and pretending like you never died. Also, it would have been too much effort for me at the time. I should have had a seeded level generation as well that produces the same level every time so you don't get a randomized level each time you reload. In Rebirth it saves at the start of each floor and that's probably a good time to save. But honestly, how often do you continue a run? I usually just click new run. In order to save your run you'd have to save a lot of information. A list of the levels that you've been on so far. Which level you're on right now. A list of bosses you've fought so you don't have to fight the same bosses again. A list of items that you've had. It also has a different list for items that you've seen that you'd also want to save. How much HP and max HP you had. How many blue hearts. How many eternal hearts you've converted to health. Really, it's quite a long list of different little variables that the overall game keeps track of. Now, I probably should have written a list of those somewhere, and I probably did, so I should have been able to make a save like this. But to me at the time, this seemed like an unsurmountable challenge, and I didn't bother with it. <laughs> Sorry. There's also a few things that I didn't bother putting into the general save file. For example, the amount of rocks you've blown up so far. So if you run your CC cleaner every day, you might not ever unlock the small rock. <laughs> but then again, you might just blow up enough rocks in a single day to get it. The achievements, by the way, are saved by Steam naturally when you get them. But I didn't use the Steam API much at the time, since there's no conventional way to access it from Flash. Instead, Flash just runs an exe file that activates the Steam achievements each time. That's why the original Isaac had no Steam overlay either, by the way. I probably could have gotten away with not having a save system at all if I just had the Steam API tell me which one of the achievements have been saved. But anyways, we did store the achievements in the save file. The achievements really are the most important thing about Isaac, because each achievement unlocks different stuff. Different characters, different items that will appear. They're more than just meaningless trophies. They encapsulate everything that changes about the game as you unlock things. This is a pretty convenient way of handling the complexity of added unlocks while at the same time getting achievements. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video of saving in the Binding of Isaac. Please subscribe to the channel. I got a big announcement video coming up soon where I will be talking about the games that I will be releasing in the near future. No longer will my games forever be stuck in development hell. 
I've worked hard on making some real progress and I've got several games in the works that look very promising. You don't want to miss this announcement. Smash that like button to keep Isaac's cookies safe. Well, looks like, according to this Twitter poll, you guys want to hear more about the enemies. Okay, always good to talk about the AI. Just let me know in the comments which enemies and specifically you would want to hear more about.